Welcome to the Daily Horror Habit Podcast. I'm your host, Jay Krieger, bringing you daily reviews of currently streaming horror movies for your twisted pleasure. Be aware that these reviews may include mild spoilers. And as always, I hope you enjoy. It's undeniable that Blumhouse is a monolith horror production company. Whether it be larger-than-life theatrical releases or lesser-known VOD offerings, Blumhouse seemingly has their talons in every horror pie imaginable. Though despite their undeniable success, the insane quantity of projects they're producing at any given time begs the question as to whether they're spreading their efforts too thin. A question their latest endeavor, Welcome to Blumhouse, doesn't necessarily answer. Welcome to Blumhouse is a series of feature films developed for Amazon Prime. The first two of four films to be released in 2020 being The Lie and Black Box, with two more being released later this October. Of the two released, I gravitated towards Black Box as its tech angle of investigating the horrors of the mind through technology is reminiscent to Black Mirror. Whether or not the film actually delivers well on that premise is another matter though. Just because you uncover the truth doesn't mean you're going to like what you find. Forgetting formative memories that shape our understanding of who we are as a person is a terrifying concept, but imagine that while trying to uncover the truth about one's past, they're continually haunted by a contorted monster. Black Box is a tale of technology and loss and we're introduced to Nolan, a widower suffering from amnesia after surviving the crash that killed his wife. His profound memory loss results in him relying on his young daughter Anna to help him with the most basic daily tasks. In a desperate bid to take control of his life, Nolan enlists Dr. Lillian who promises her experimental virtual reality procedure will restore that control. But as Nolan will learn, some promises are too good to be true. The procedure allows him to revisit pivotal but fractured memories from his past, though he is constantly pursued by a blurry-faced monster that contorts its body in horrifying ways. Now it's a race against uncovering his past while surviving his present if he wants to keep some semblance of his former life. If you're wondering, yes, Black Box feels very much like an episode of Black Mirror, as technology is used to explore a character's traumatic past in search of a brighter future. Writers Stephen Herman, Wade Alien Marcus, and Emmanuel Osai Kufour do an excellent job of establishing the gravity of Nolan's predicament. We're immediately sympathetic as a brief tour of his home covered in sticky note reminding him to turn off the coffee pot or eat shows the dire extent of his injury. His amnesia affects him so gravely that his daughter's school even threatens to report him to Child Protective Services if he forgets to pick her up one more time. Nolan's desperation at regaining that which he's lost is made palpable for the audience, so much so that we understand his determination to undergo Dr. Lillian's risky procedure. We see the struggle of a single parent extrapolated into a walking nightmare, though the nightmare has only just begun. Much like Black Mirror, this pairing of technology and the human condition has nightmarish ramifications for our protagonist. As Nolan delves further into his subconsciousness, the monster stalking him grows more violent hindering him from uncovering the truth. These few instances of the backwards man, played by horror contortionist icon Twisty Troy James, are chilling. James' ability to bend and morph his body into literal nightmare fuel once again leaves a disturbing mark on the horror he's embodying. Pair this with a recurring, sickening, bone-cracking sound as his joints make unfathomable bends, the backwards man serves as yet another terrific monster performance. Though for as strong as this monster is, it reveals a glaring problem that haunts the film. Black Box's scares are more or less a one-trick pony, returning to this only scare for the entirety of the film. There are few instances or a variety of actual scares outside of the backwards man or a brief jump scare, making the film lack the horror bite it desperately needs. Nolan enters a memory, and the backwards man appears and does his creepy crawly thing while never evolving on the ways in which he moves or haunts Nolan. This leaves a majority of the film's time dedicated to uncovering Nolan's past, though here is also where the film falters. For a 100 minute movie, Black Box feels incredibly drawn out, stretching its narrative thinner than need be. The film does feature a creative twist that applies a mad scientist angle to its technology-focused narrative, but it is introduced far too late into the film. The narrative of writing previous wrongdoings to others isn't exactly breaking new ground, so the length dedicated to this portion of the film is very underwhelming in its execution. Despite its faults, 
Black Box was able to continually draw me back into its technological nightmare. Strong performance from Mamadou Athey. His trajectory from sympathetic to steadfast in his determination to navigating a painful and disjointed past kept me engaged despite the film's overall lack of scares. Athey fuels the film's attention to heartfelt character-driven drama, such as his slowly remembering key moments of his life. A simple act of picking up a pair of chopsticks triggers a flashback of Nolan and his late wife's favorite sushi spot. Nolan then takes his daughter there and goes through the motions of teaching her how to hold chopsticks. The film, at times, is a powerful examination of the power of memories and how they define and shape us as individuals. It's just unfortunate that there aren't more moments such as this, given the narrative outstays its welcome after a while. For being the first of two films released as part of Welcome to Blumhouse, horror films for Amazon, Black Box sets the bar low, with a lack of creative scares. Which is a shame, given it feeds into the idea that Blumhouse is spreading itself too thin, losing the bite that originally put them on the map. However, those looking for a character-driven Black Mirror-esque narrative will get more out of this, as it's a poignant intersectionality of finding oneself amongst using technology. Which makes for a decent drama, even if Black Box lacks the creative spark it needs to distance itself from its influences. And that'll do it for another episode of Daily Horror Habit. See you guys tomorrow for another Daily Horror Movie Review. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe to Daily Horror Habit on your preferred streaming service and follow at Daily Horror Habit on Instagram and at Daily Horror Pod on Twitter.